Hey guys, how hey. are we doing today? Very good. Very good. All right, Romeo everybody doing well? Day. Every day is Romeo <laughs> oh Day. Goodness. That's that's the. Yeah, answer. we got to stop that shit sometime. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's part I of the like opening it. now. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway. Glad to get together with you guys today and glad Welcome. that we have an audience that's uh, willing and able to join us. So thank you for coming back to the Romeo podcast. Welcome. Thank you for <laughs> viewing our past episodes and for your ongoing support. Much appreciated. All right, guys, today's topic. What is it? What is it? You're always curious. Aren't I you? am. I have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> Envelope, please. Well, I, I, I thought it would be interesting for us and perhaps for our audience as well, just to get into a conversation around what the difference is between sex and gender. Because the two terms seem to be used somewhat interchangeably mm -hmm. by some people. What gender you want to have sex with? <laughs> that's not the topic. We, we can have that discussion if you like, but that's not what was intended. Gender, sex. Okay. It's really it. to, to try and... and make the difference between what sex is, so defining sex versus defining what gender is. Okay, and not as a verb. <laughs> well, we can incorporate that into the conversation since got you're it, got it, intent got it. On, on having that conversation. So <laughs> got it, got it, by okay. all means, why don't you get us started? I'm not the person to get us started. <laughs> My God. So sex versus gender. Well, I mean, these days it seems to be a gray zone on the gender side which didn't, I mean, 20, 30, 40 years ago didn't really exist. Uh, I shouldn't say it didn't exist. It did exist in some people, uh, but it was, uh, you know, highly uh, anomalous, if I can use that word, and, and not something that we, we saw very often, but it did occur. Uh, I remember working about 30 some odd years ago with uh, 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 someone who had transitioned. Uh, he happened, she happen to be, or they, I guess these days, right? Which I said I wouldn't, <laughs> but in any case, they or he or she had transitioned to a woman. He was, uh, uh, or she was at that point, maybe six two, six three, maybe 240. Looked like, just looked like a huge guy with long hair, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in a dress, which was very bizarre back then because it, I mean. It might it, be bizarre today as well. So I, I just want to stop you for a moment because you used he, she, they. Yeah. And so I'm going to say, let's stop for a moment. <laughs> okay. Because we're going to confuse one another. And I'm going to, I'm going to suggest we take a step back mm -hmm. and perhaps start with a definition okay. for each of sex and gender. Okay. Because I think that might be helpful. Yeah. But I, I like that you went there. I like that you went to the pronoun they. Yeah. Because I mean, at this point, who knows how to, like, everyone's all over the map as far as I'm concerned. So, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to suggest and, and, I'll look for someone else perhaps to bring definition to the terms. I personally think of sex as biological. Exactly. And okay. I think of gender as psychological in terms of how people identify. So that's where I draw the distinction. I agree with you completely. Is, is that fair? I agree with you completely. That's a good starting you, or point. Or do any of you think differently of sex and gender? I think uh, for me it's the same. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to expand on that? Well, there's two genders, two sex. Well, and a lot of mental issues. You may have a female. So wh whether one agrees or not that there are two genders and two sexes, are you saying that if you are of a particular sex, then you are of the same gender? Yes. So you don't believe in identification. No. You don't, right? It's not like a hundred percent? You don't accept. Like a hundred percent yeah, of 100%. the time. Okay. So the difference between the two of us mm -hmm. is um, I don't agree with the hundred percent. Okay. But I don't agree with the level that it's at today uh, in terms of the huge uptick in people who all of a sudden, now that everyone's talking about it, has gender dysmorphia? Dysphoria. Dysphoria. Have you noticed? Dysphoria, right? So I, I, so I, I don't yeah. agree that it's 100%, yeah. but it, it's maybe 1% or less or should be 1% or no, less no, I'm gonna, historically. I'm going to look for a further point of clarification. Okay, go ahead. Because I heard Aki agree yep. that sex is biological and gender is and psychological. And gender is psychological. 100% of the time. So you, you do agree with that? Or no, not, not 100% of the time. I, uh, so that's the thing. Right now, I think there's a lot of uh, brainwashing and a lot of um, suggestions being thrown at young people who may not feel comfortable in their bodies 
uh, at a time when they are questioning their sexuality, they're questioning their bodies changing into uh, into uh, adulthood, uh, puberty is, uh, is hitting them at 12, 11, 12, 13, 14 years of age. And they're getting all these messages now that were not out there 40, 50 years ago about, hey, you may not be a, a guy, even though you have male genitalia, you may actually, you know, you may actually be a woman or a, or a female or and so on. Or you may be both or like there's so much information. OK, or hold on, hold on, hold on. At, hold on. At, at, a, at a time when they're potentially very confused. So all I'm saying is the gender identification of that person with all of the information or misinformation that's being thrown at them has, in my opinion, increased dramatically the amount of, of gender dis, dis, dysphoria. dysphoria that's out there. You've, made, you've made the point clearly. Okay. You, you still haven't addressed the okay. initial question. Oh, I said I said they are different, but to but but there's a very small percentage of actual people who have this gender. That's dysphoria. not the question. That's not the question. Right. In terms of definition of terms, yeah, I agree with the is terms. sex. It could be defined biologically, mostly, or not? mostly. Okay, okay, I, that, that's where I'm going to differ. And and just, just to me, if it, it, because if there's a if there's a biological definition, yes, for human beings. Sex is defined as either male or female. Correct. Based on chromosome counts. Yeah, and gender is as well. No, gender is not. Well, okay. correct. I think that gender okay. is that's, defined. That's your opinion. Well, we can look at chromosomes. In, it's science. Well, sex. He is just science. Made, he just made my sex. my point. No, sex is science. Sex, right. So he's not saying gender. No, gender is not science. I'm sorry, but it is for most 99 point something percent of humanity. Yes. No, I'm just no, you saying can that say, you can say 99 percent of humanity. Yes. Identifies as a gender that correlates to their sex. Correct. Again, gender dysphoria happens in a certain percentage of people. But so this what? is a problem of people being born in, in a different sex than their brain has developed. Exactly. Which I agree that that happens. I'm not saying that does not that does not happen. What I'm saying is that that typical little slice of humanity that somehow got messed up in the in 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 utero and and and, and came out the way that they did. That's a small, real small slice of humanity. When five and ten percent of people are now thinking that they have this gender dysphoria, when biologically it happens in maybe one percent of humanity, then that extra five, nine, ten percent is a problem of information on people who are getting confused. So yeah. that's all I'm saying. So I don't know where your percentages come from, mm -hmm. uh, but for, for me, but from for it's me, a minority. From searching online, it was about a one percent. Uh, what, number so so I, I don't know what the sources are because online searches don't necessarily provide factual uh, I guess I, I, I looked at multiple so I right. tried for to me, find it as much we know we know it's me, a minority we can agree on that it's very difficult yeah. to have okay. a conversation or debate right unless there's an there's an agreement on definition of terms because well, if not we're going to confuse I, ourselves so I'm agreeing with you that they're not the same but they're only not the same for a very small fraction of people. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So I agree with you that so, there can be gender which is different than sex, which is different from what Do Dominic said, but only for a very, very small slice of humanity, not for 10% of people. That's all I'm saying. That may be the right percentage. I don't know. And frankly, I don't care what the percentage is. What I'm looking for... I, I do, though. Okay. There's a reason why, and we'll get to it. Fine. That's, okay. that's fine. That's perfectly fair. Okay. What I'm trying to do is, is to establish a baseline, a foundation okay. from which we can have a conversation, because if we don't agree that one is biological and the other is psychological, it's very difficult for us not to mix up terms and, and to bring clarity to what we're saying or what we understand someone else saying. Fair enough. I just think that it's almost always the same. That's all. Because the people that think they're not the sex that they are, it's both sex and gender, they don't think. They are what they are. So. Well, no, they recognize they recognize their birth sex, but they can't connect with it. Well, they, I don't think they recognize it. Oh no, they do. It starts from that point. They say, "No, I was born." No. Well, no, no, no they no, recognize no. it. They're Look, saying, "Guys, I, I don't I don't know whether one of you is right and the other one wrong, or if you're both right in what you're saying, depending on the individual." Maybe. But. If I come back to the definition, 
what should be uh, irrefutable is that your chromosome count determines yeah. for humans whether you're male or female. That's not negotiable. From that point on, I think it's a question of how open-minded someone wants to be about another human being's uh, desire to uh, be identified as something other than the sex that their chromosome count scientifically says they are. And I'm perfect, for me, I'm perfectly fine with that. I could care less whether someone identifies as male, female, non-binary, I could care less. Guys, do you think it's a coincidence that this gender dysphoria increase is, is not, uh, it parallels this mental illness increase in our society? I think there's a parallel there. So for, I don't know. So, so for Dominic, you're kind of equating mental illness with... with uh, I think in a lot of cases, yeah. Okay, so that's an opinion. And well, it is. I mean, uh, for, for people that struggle, with, there, there are people, for most people in that situation, they're struggling with it. Absolutely. And a big part of what you're saying is, yes, you have, you know, all this, you know, very liberal and easy uh, conversations and encouraging young people, you know, who are not in a position to be able to, to deal with this discussion and, and pushing them and encouraging them. There is that. But there's also the other side of that, which okay. is there's a lot of oppression. And you see that the level of depression and, and suicides among LGBTQ people yes, no, that, is, is I exploding. Agree with, I agree. with. So there has to be a balance. And and and. I think a little bit of what Dominic said kind of supports what I'm saying with respect to uh, impressionable kids at a certain age being given information that maybe tends to confuse them or puts them down a path that may not be the right path eventually. There are situations where, where kids believe they're in, they, they have gender dysphoria and then a few years later, oh my God, no, I was wrong yeah. because it, it happened to be in their formative years. So. You know, there's a lot to talk about in this topic, and I think I'm I'm getting ahead of myself in, in, in going there. But I agree with you, Pat. I mean, you know, from just think, look at all this discussion we're having just for the simple, simple thing of hey, gender versus sex, mm -hmm. and look at how much more complex it's going to be as Absolutely. we start, you know, peeling some of the layers. I, I don't think it gets complex because if if you agree on the definition of terms, then honestly, it only becomes a question of one person's opinion versus another. You don't think it's a slippery so, slope? Well, I just for for I do believe it's a slippery slope for young people. And when I say young, I'm going to talk about um, pubescent. You know, well, pre-pubescent to pubescent to yes. pubescent yeah. until you reach the stage of adulthood. And, and I can explain why I believe it's dangerous. Well, I, I agree with you. I, I, th I think that it's perfectly normal for and I don't know what the percentage is, but I'm going to say uh, uh, a reasonably large percentage of the population, male and female, born male or female, at various stages of early life all the, th all the way through adolescence into early adulthood, to question what their preferences are in terms of sexuality. For instance, if I'm born male, do I find myself more attracted to males? Do I find myself more attracted to females? Some people question that along the way, and then they reach a stage in their lives where they feel comfortable with their choices and they're much more, they're much firmer, if you will, in terms of the lifestyle they choose. Now, some don't, and that's perfectly okay for me. I don't, I don't care either way, but this is what I observe. I think the danger is, at an early age, for instance, I'll use an expression we used when we were kids. There were girls who liked to dress in boys' clothes, who enjoyed playing sports that were predominantly male sports at the time, and we referred to those girls as tomboys. Yeah, tomboys. Which is a stupid expression, but that's how we referred to them. Mm -hmm. Today, I would say with the pressures of social media and extreme liberalism, what and do he I, looks at why me. do I look at you when I say and he looks at me. For reasons our audience will understand. <laughs> but you look to your right. <laughs> I do, but he's to the left. <laughs> people watching. <laughs> that those young girls may feel pressure, sometimes from their parents, sometimes from other sources, to think of themselves more as a boy than as a girl. And I think that's wrong. That's there's exactly. nothing, to me, there's nothing wrong with, with a young boy enjoying playing with, with dolls, and there's nothing wrong with a little girl enjoying playing with trucks and tractors. And yeah, exactly. exactly. I, I think the labels are what's it's become... It's the adults that are, pu that are pushing it down on the kids, and that's, that's, that's the tragedy as far that. as I'm concerned. I don't know. So you're, you're uh, saying that parents are really uh, there... Oh, yes, they are. That uh, disconnected? I don't think so. 
Absolutely. I watched a documentary. Absolutely. I watched a documentary a while back, and I'm going to say months ago, that uh, studied a number of different real life cases, including one which comes to mind of a young child whose parents saw a behavior that they equated with a sex opposite to the one their child was born into. And they actually would dress their little boy in girls' clothes. They insisted at school, elementary school, that the child be referred to in a girl's name. Those are sick parents. And she. Yeah, but hold it a second. That's liberalism. Sorry, gone, they started like, going preserved. down the path, and, and the parents were perfectly aligned. Okay. And within a few years, I think it was two years, that young child began to uh, exhibit male, much more male, uh, typical male behavior. Didn't want to wear girls' clothes, and but in the parents' mind, they had already begun the transition process. So the parents did not adapt to that change? One of the parents did, and the other one didn't. And what well, ended up happening divorce, I guess. is that they divorced. Okay. Did they split the kid in two as well? And I don't understand how you can look at a three- or four-year-old child yeah, and make a decision and like decide that. for them yeah. what gender they should adopt okay. for the remainder of their lives. But it makes no sense to but, me. But was it, was it, was it that one-sided? I mean, these were not people that actually were having conversations with their, with their child about you know, what the child is feeling, what the child yes. wants what to is be? A th yes, they What's did. A five, but what does a four-year-old say? I like girls' well, four clothes. I like wearing dresses. I like playing with dolls. Yeah. I like to wear my hair long. Okay, well, you have you have two choices. Either either you you completely uh, you you do what they what these particular parents did in the documentary, which is they went along with that, or you just you, you just shut it down and uh, you just uh, why don't you make just, the child feel guilty and why don't make, you, make the child feel Why miserable. don't you just let the child be and well, decide for themselves? This is what I'm saying. But right. I, I, all, all that's I'm, what I agree with. What, well, all I'm saying is an example that you give. I don't know. I, I'll, you know, I haven't watched a documentary. But in a situation like that, I mean, there, there is, you know, you have, to, you have to also see what the child is going through, understand what they're going through, and, and, and try to come to terms with that as well. Um, I mean, you don't just, you know, say, you know, you can't think this way. You, you know, all this that you're doing that you're thinking is wrong, uh, little one. We, we can't. Well, it would be just so, so I can understand what you're you saying. Have. No, there, well, there's multiple choices. But you're saying the, the parents shouldn't have beaten the child and said, no, you can't play with dolls. Exactly. OK, but they didn't do that. They went the opposite opposite direction. So I, I don't think anyone of us would agree that you should beat a child because they're <sighs> not exhibiting. Not beating. So, talking so, about physical so, violence. In, so in the example I gave and, you know, we're, we're all parents as the in the example I gave, I'm not saying this is the right approach, but here's how I would have approached it. I have a little boy likes to wear girls clothes. You know what? You want to wear girls clothes in the home and, you know, playing outside, but that's, it doesn't bother me. You want to wear your hair long, wear your hair long. Um, if, if that behavior persists through early childhood into adolescence, by the time that child reaches adulthood, they're in a position where they can make a conscious decision about what gender they choose to be. Mm -hmm. As a parent, I would accept that. Excellent. Before then, I would say, you're a little boy. I'm going to continue referring to you by your, by your given name. I'm going to continue to refer to you as he. And I'm going to give you the flexibility to wear your hair long, dress the way you like. You know, and, and we're going to have a lot of conversations because other kids at school or, or friends may, may call you names or treat you a certain way. And you want to make sure that that child builds up a certain level of resilience and so on. But I'm not going to encourage them to be one way or the other. I'm going to observe. I'm going to allow the natural behavior to play itself out. And at the right stage of life, which in my mind is when you reach adulthood, then you can make a decision about how you want to live. Exactly. And I think most people, most parents, that's the approach they take. I don't know. I think that we have more reasonable parents than we have parents who are extremists. Do you know that for a fact? Or I do not know it for a fact. So I mean, in the opinion. documentary that you saw, how many cases were in that documentary? Oh, uh, there were over half a dozen so, cases. So those parents, that, that, that was typical of the parents, the other parents in that documentary? Uh, well, what was, in some cases, the family construct was different. So here I'm referring to a young child that had two parents. And when the child went through right. this transformation, the parents ended up separating, divorcing. There were other situations where it was single parent families. Uh, I think I remember and, this case. And the ages ranged actually from, I'm going to say, about four years old all the way through to adolescence. 
and then they followed them for several years. Right. So some of them were actually reaching adulthood, and others were going from young children to still you know, elementary age, but a little bit older. Others were going from, from pre-adolescence to adolescence. And uh, fast forward, apparently this was a subset of, of a much broader number of cases that have been followed. And I, I don't know the exact numbers, I can't recall, but I'm going to say that somewhere around 50% of the cases mm -hmm. reverted away. So by the time a kid reaches adulthood, the age of 18, that about 50% of them have transitioned back and forth. So genders snap back to sex. Right. To birth. Yeah. Okay. I'm just yeah. I'm just worried about about I, you know, half. I'm just yeah. worried about throwing the book at parents. These are very difficult situations. They demand an awful lot. It's not easy to figure this out. So some parents, you know, uh, might explore and go too far in the wrong direction. Others might get it right. But you know, you have to give uh, parents the opportunity to come to terms with this. Yeah. Okay. That's there's nothing wrong with that. I, I think one of the problems that we have in society right now is how much we've glorified this whole thing, this whole yeah. topic. You, anytime you go to any any public uh, you watch on TV or anything, a, a comedian uh, uh, at any show or whatever, someone says, oh, and this is the first LGBTQ or the first trans uh, person to whatever. Everyone starts clapping. Oh, you're a trans person. Everyone starts clapping. What are you clapping? You're clapping because what? you want to encourage these people because it, it, most of society yeah, but look at what, look at what it criticizes did. them and attacks them. Okay, thank you very much. So... The result of that encouragement is parents, like he just described, looking at a three, four-year-old child who's, uh, who likes to wear girls' uh, clothes and deciding for that person that, oh, my God, you're a trans. Oh, my God, we have a trans child. Look how lucky we are. We have a trans child. Everyone's going to clap at us when we bring our child into something. It's a positive encouragement or it's a positive reinforcement for something that doesn't require positive reinforcement it does require positive reinforcement why? because as i said most of society really yeah. is very discriminatory and and very intolerant of of lgbtq young people don't say lgbtq i'm sorry do not put lesbians and gays into this i think why? at this point in society we passed we, we, we passed that point that's exactly what the community is who they are hang on a second what i'm trying to say is i don't think very few people right now have anything against gay marriage. Don't lump gayness with transness. I'm sorry. It's more it's, mainstream. It's very mainstream. We have significant, significant quarters of society, but there's still, you know, people who absolutely Listen, in North America, forget in Africa or marriage. other places, even uh, in North the America, East, even in North America. Listen, by and large, do not. I don't think you can disagree with me. By and large, by and large, yes. With respect to the uh, uh, ability to get married, with respect to how people treat yes. them. We're in a much better place. So if you if you put trans in with LGBTQ, no, no, I'm sorry. But let's let's treat trans as trans. Lesbian and gay, hey, they can get married. They have all the rights. People hold hands, kissing in public. It's uh, not an issue. Uh, They're not getting strung up on a on, on a on a tree like they used to be. Both oh, lesbians yeah. and gays, sex and gender is the same. Yeah, they are. So the point is uh, putting so what, putting what is the point though i don't know I don't, I don't understand your point there is there is we all agree we all so, agree that there is a part of our community that are uh, uh, diverse what i'm trying to get back at is the positive reinforcement that society all of a sudden is throwing on trans people oh my god trans they 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 like you said oh they've been they've been beaten down whatever what happened to uh, blacks and hispanics and how they've been discriminated against and how all of a sudden trans people are being clapped at or whatever. Look, I, I'm not hung what? up on the clapping. All I'm saying is that society is let's just make sure there's a place for everybody in our society. That's all. That's all. That's, that's all we're talking the about The positive here. reinforcement. What's the positive but, but it's reinforcement? Not, it's not it's, but Aki, it's not what we're talking about because I, I hear, I hear Nuran expressing other thoughts and opinions mm -hmm. on something that I think has legitimacy, which is there's a, there's a tendency, and I think, again, social media, another example of where social media just turbocharges certain trends. Yeah, Absolutely. Exactly. You know, there, there's one thing when we talk about acceptance, it's another when it becomes an obsession. And we seem to be obsessed as a society to a Western society and placing labels on things and people yeah. and celebrating things. So I know when my kids were in high school, so somewhere between the ages, I'm going to say 14 and 17, that... I noticed from, from some of the conversations they were bringing to the dinner table 
that it had become very common amongst their age group to talk about uh, homosexuality and bisexuality mm -hmm. as if it had become the norm, when in fact, it's always existed. I think the level of acceptance has grown. Definitely. But to suggest that it's the norm, and what I mean by the norm is that statistically, their whole argument, just based on conversations similarly aged kids were having, is that, well, I have all these friends and they, they're all bisexual, therefore, uh, most people are bisexual. They say, no, statistically, most people are not bisexual. And I'm not even sure that the kids in your class who are telling you they're bisexual understand at this age whether or not they are. Okay. They may be having thoughts, they may be having preferences, they may be having feelings, and they may still have those feelings in three, four, five years' time. I don't know. Okay. Or they can experiment and, I, and figure out that it's not for them. And, and by the way, I would tell my kids, either way, I don't care whether your friends are homosexuals, bisexuals, or heterosexuals. I don't care. Live, let them live their best lives. Exactly. But they're at a stage in their lives where they may be confused about things. And I think the best thing for them and for you and for everyone else to do is to just allow for time, observe over time, let people get a grasp on, on what their true feelings are. And as they reach adulthood, it'll become clearer to them and they'll, leave their, they'll lead their lives accordingly. Yeah. Spoken like a strong liberal. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, but it's, that's, that's, what's wrong with that? I have a human being. Being. <laughs> Don't put a label on me. <laughs> <laughs> Too late for that. I just find that uh, our society is, for example, would you be okay if your daughter was nine years old, goes into a public washroom, women, and some guy who identifies as a, man, as a woman follows? To that no, I mean, that there's, that, that's a very difficult uh, conversation. So, and there are some accommodations that are being made. So your answer is no, you wouldn't like that. I would, I would, yeah, I would have, uh, I would pause. Let's put it that way. I would pause. <laughs> so it's interesting. I, can I piggyback on your example? Sure. Because you talk, you know, it could be a, a six foot two, 220 pound well, no. male. Yeah. What about in elementary school? Should kids who identify as a gender other than the sex they were born into be allowed to use no. the washrooms? No, no, no. 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 Because no. what's okay. going to happen with kids, because kids are curious, yeah, and they're going to be starting to, you know, here, this is my parts, these are your parts, but, uh, and whatever. Uh, maybe it's okay. I, I, you know, I don't know. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, too fairly, young. I'm too fairly young. liberal but for, for that type of stuff. You know, kids are going to be kids, and they're going to yeah. learn, and they're going to grow. But at the same time, I mean, it's it's. Let's stop with all of this 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 gray zoning. It's you know, much. at a certain point, let's let's just stick to what you no, have. It's interesting. So you guys are aligned on this point, Aki. Do you do you share that view? I think I think in practice, I think we're doing a good job of uh, uh, of finding solutions uh, right now. We're not hearing. I'm not hearing like any explosive uh, uproar around. Uh, you know, separate bathrooms for transgender people. So I think that, you know, uh, we, well, we're doing something you, right. Uh, right now, what I'm seeing actually is, is when I go out to a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of restaurants and a lot of clubs now uh, are... Have, Unisex. Uh, they have basically open, open, open right, bathrooms. Right, that's part of it. Yeah, so, that's part of the solution. In Europe, North America, both. Both, both, both yeah. Both, both, mm -hmm. both. Yeah, both. yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Here, uh, That's no. a cop-out. It's not a solution. Why, what do you mean a cop out of solution? People are, you know, everybody, everybody's finding like some reasonable ground where, that they can agree on. <laughs> okay, but let, let him express his opinion. It's why, a cop out. Why, why is it a cop out? Because they don't want to alienate anybody by right. having male and female, and they don't want to add a third one, so they make it open for everybody. That's it. I think it's a cop very out. reasonable compromise. Yeah, okay. That's what good management Cop is. out. Good management. And, and do you think women want men to be in the stall next to them when they're in a bathroom? An enclosed uh, bathroom? Yes. Do you think that, that men... Well, why do I care who's next to me? Or why would anybody care who's next oh, to you? Oh, you should ask your wife if she would like... I'm talking about enclosed, separate uh, yes. bathrooms. That's stalls. Right. Stalls. 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 With, with stalls. space underneath the stall. Doesn't yes. matter. Stalls. Would you like... I, well, most... Of, I don't... Would you like... Do you think you're... It's you're, a cop out. Most women, I would think, and I'm, you know, sorry if I'm I speaking agree. for women, right. but I think a lot of women would feel okay. uncomfortable okay. with a guy okay. next to them in the shitter okay. next to them. Okay. When, okay. when, because most women, it's called a bathroom stall. 
That's the right. shitter. <laughs> so the bathroom stalls. So <laughs> yes, uh, I, I'm sure you know you would get you would get uh, other opinions as well on that. Not just people who okay. were, I mean, there are people who so will be uncomfortable. At what point, there are people who have absolutely no issue with it. At what point does it does it stop making sense for an entire society to stop the earth from spinning and change every fucking Good thing point. that we've what ever bullshit? done? And what way one percent or less of the population? Because because first of all, we are also have minorities, and as a civilized democracy. Democratic society we, based have, on human have rights. Have we taken care you of all to, racism? No, we have not. And so it's why a work don't we in work on that first? Because we don't. It, we can It's not about one or the other. Yeah, justice is not selective about this group versus that group. Justice is universal. I'd like to focus a lot more energy on people of color getting a lot less racism thrown at them. You, Maybe some less anti-Semitism would justice be nice. Is How about that? Universal. Justice is universal. Totally agree. Yeah, but we're not changing bathrooms for black people to have different bathrooms. They used to, which was terrible. But thank God we got past that. Now you want to go back to segregation, in a sense, for trans? Is that what we're trying to do here, or what? Of you course not. The whole purpose of it is to make sure that the trans... Look, the, the, what our ultimate goal are accepted be, as the gender our that, they, ultimate that, goal that they do. Should that be, they, our ultimate goal should be that there should be a place of respect in society for everyone. I don't mind. End of conversation. Including their mental health. Or what do you want to do with people who are, who are struggling with mental health? Well, he's equating the two. That's, that's okay. It. Okay. So yes, yes. So, so people, you know, people who have poor health and who have uh, psychological issues and who are suffering from mental health. As a society, what would you like to, to propose to them? Like, like uh, Duran said, we can't let the earth stop spinning. For in, in what way is, has the earth stopped spinning? In one way, in what, how, wow. how is our day-to-day -day life in any way affected by the fact that we are an open society, a democratic wow. society built on human rights? I don't have young kids anymore, but if I did, I have to worry that they're going to a washroom. Oh, okay. come on. Seriously. Okay, I haven't heard of any. I haven't heard of any parents. Well, I, ha I don't think that we issues, see in the well, news yes. or any report there has been. Ab about. Uh, I'll, I'll send you a couple. Yeah. Okay. Mainstream, please. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, how about uh, trans people uh, in sports? Should we get to no, that? No, biological. I agree. There, there. There's an exception that has to be made. Biological. Ah. Uh, biological males should not be allowed to compete so, in women's sports. Absolutely. So you pick and choose. So you're. Yeah. It's not perfect. We, you know, it's Sorry, not perfect. When you, when you say they shouldn't be allowed to compete at any level, in in, uh, in the other in the opposite sexes, I mean, uh, no. Uh, there we hold go. Hold a second. Hold a second. <laughs> gotcha. uh, biological, biological. Uh, you know, bi in, when it comes to sports, I think that you have to to respect the uh, um, the sexuality of the individual. Because otherwise, we know that that again. What if they're physically? Biologically, biologically, the uh, you know the, the the born male has an advantage. That's clear. So you think that's true for recreational as well as competitive? Uh, competitive, I'm talking no, about high no, level no, sports. That's, that's why I was looking. Yeah, for competitive, high level. Recreational as well. Recreational as well. Well, if you consider uh, college sports, is that recreational or? It depends. If it's intramural, then yes, it's recreational. Well, if it's competitive, for instance, if you're vying for an NCAA championship, absolutely, then it's competitive. Or the Olympics. Yeah, but let's say you're vying for, uh, uh, you know, to, to go to a university and you need a scholarship, you're competing against male if you're a female. Okay, so let, let's look at male sports. Yeah. So you can have a male sport where a particular individual is head and shoulders more talented and productive than all the other males playing that sport? Should he be prevented from partaking? You mean born a female? No, I'm talking, forget male versus female. I'm talking oh, about I see what you mean. Oh, okay. a male sport. Yeah, so a pick, prodigy pick, pick in a that sport. sport. Okay. Yeah, a prodigy in yeah, that sport. That's, no, that's, no, that's, no, because you're starting, you're starting the same. But, but he, he dominates. Yeah, he dominates. Okay, so, yeah. No, but yeah. he doesn't have a head start because of his chromosomes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But he dominates. Doesn't matter. Doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. That's, but that's, if it's recreational, why, why would you care that, that again, again. An, an individual born male who transitions female if it's in adulthood? So for recreational, I don't care. I mean, okay, you don't care. So recreational. That's why I'm asking the question. If it's a pickup game at the. What's the difference? What? There isn't. You have girls that play uh, male, right. male uh, sports. No, I think the, really the issue I heard was with a male who Hi. is genetically bigger, stronger, faster, who yeah. plays a female sport and outperforms at a female. competitive level. Right. You're saying at a competitive level. Yeah. 
I hear Dominic saying recreational or competitive. Uh, I'll tell you why. And I'm using the argument that if you have a male who's a prodigy playing... But that's not an argument. Sport. That's that's not an no, argument what's the at all. Then why would I care tell you that why. a male who, who transitions female because we is dominating a female sport? Are, are you kidding me? No. So, oh, my God. Okay, so basically uh, Messi can go play no, with I'm the female recreation, team. No, I'm saying recreational. Well, I said recreational. Well, I, I don't care. I'm he giving you the example us. of recreational. But he agrees. I said I don't care recreational. Well, and Dominic, Dominic, Dominic is the only does, one. Which is why I use the example I'll tell you why. Hey, I'll Dominic, tell you why. Look at Dominic. He's I'll the one that's why. taking I don't that position. Example, you, you, that's take, for example, soccer. Mm -hmm. Okay, recreational. Let's say 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. The... The, the one who was born a male, if it plays against the females, injuries, because it's a different type of physical, you know, play. So I, I said earlier, and I will stand by this comment, that I do not believe, personal opinion, folks, I do not believe that anyone should transition before reaching the age of adulthood. Oh, I totally agree. So your example of a 10 and 12 year old doesn't 18 years for old. me. That's your, that's your, uh, your so because, I think, I think because to most, me, 18 seems like a reasonable starting yeah, point. Yeah, but Pat. And if it happens at 18, 19, 20, I'm enrolled in university. I identify it's a recreational sport, intramural. I don't care. Let that person dominate where I have an issue is where we start giving in competitive sports. Yep. I agree. Awards, trophies, prizes to individuals who and have an inherent advantage. Yeah. We're all, at birth. we're all saying the same thing. I mean, you're, you're taking Nobody, a little no, slice of... Yes, we're we not are. All, no, that's not what Dominic is saying. I know, saying. but... Dominic's you're, saying you're, he applies you're, that to you're, recreational sports. Yeah, but you're picking at... Uh, yeah, okay, but it's such a small little thing. Like, leave, leave it's it not a small thing. No, you're, you're making it more than it is. It's like most times kids can play. They can do whatever the hell they want. They can play male, female in the same team. Recreational, it doesn't matter. No, but, Domin but, okay, but that, what's interesting is, though, e even that, uh, kids, you have an issue with that. Of course. Well, there you go. listen, when boys play with girls and they're rough they can they can uh, size wise if they're bigger and they hurt mind you you can no, have a big girl that does the same thing no. to a smaller girl that's unusual yeah. that's it or yeah. to a boy or a boy to a boy exactly or a but girl to a boy yes exactly that happens so there's certain uh, of course because people grow up at different uh, so, different so basically you're the one you're the only one from the yeah. from the four of us but it's not a big deal that uh we draw the line also for recreational sports yes okay absolutely okay, okay. Okay, and we're all agreed that for competitive sports, the line should be drawn. Absolutely. Oh. Okay, so at at what point at what point does the pendulum starts going uh, start going the other way, guys? I mean, uh, uh, in, it's what do you starting. mean by that? Uh, just the, the, the pushback, because yeah. things always happen, like things go too far in one direction or, or another, and then they start swinging back. And you, had, you do have pushback, and you do have people that are saying enough, and you do have the right wing, in, 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 you know, especially here and in the States and everywhere mm -hmm. else, everywhere pushing, else. Uh, you know, pushing back very hard and, and not wanting any of it and, and, and legislating you know, uh, up the wazoo and stuff. Exactly. But there's a reason why they're doing this, right? I mean, when things go so far left to what Pat said earlier, where parents are like encouraging their kids because they're getting socially, you know, uh, social yeah. acceptance and, and, and kudos I, for having, oh, you have a trans child, you're so lucky. Do we, can, can we at least agree that most families, most parents, yeah, most try, parents try, not, try to do the right thing? I agree with you. Okay, they're not the extremists. I they're agree trying with to you. find the right path I agree for, with their, you, for I, their child. They love their child. Yes. They're good, you know, heads of their family. Yes, but can what about society? What, what should society, well, that's what society do? Society, that should, be the, that, that should be the mainstream of society what I just described. Most people try to be responsible parents. Yes, I agree with you. It's but not, that's society. It's, what do we do with the outliers? But wait, that's guys, what society it's, it's has not, to It's do. not just outliers because what you're saying is most parents have, have a good intent. Yeah. And I, I agree, I agree with, with you 100%. I agree with you too. But intent doesn't translate into effective execution. So how good you are at parenting is not a question of are your intentions honorable? Of course. So do parents have the necessary knowledge and skills to navigate first and foremost for the better of their the betterment and, and, and better interests of their child or children, and in addition, the broader family so, in a way that is effective? 
And that's where I would argue, no, I don't question the intent. I think most parents are well-intentioned. So you think most exactly. parents are not able to execute properly? No, I think most parents I are disagree. lacking the knowledge and skills. I, most parents that I know are really, they're, they're trying. I, I they're, don't they're know trying how to educate many people themselves. you know. I'm looking at broader society. I think broader society. I don't think broader, broader we would have like a major crisis if we had most parents uh, absolutely um, getting it wrong and, and raising their kids, you know, in a, in a negative and, and, and harmful way. Listen, we wouldn't be able to function as a civilization. We have... The, the, we need to deal as a society. You need to put the, the the goalposts in place for the outliers in society. Just like you have yes. people on the right side yes. of society, on the right, on the right wing side, if they have a gay child and they're trying to reprogram that child to you know to 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 ungayify them or whatever, we can all agree that that's absurd and crazy. And as parents, you know, they're doing the wrong thing. It's always and we can all agree on the left side uh, for parents absolutely. like Pat, what Pat said. So. These outliers exist in society, and society has to put norms in place so that we can actually deal with these outliers in a way that says, hey, this is how we should all try to behave. And I think this is... I think the pendulum is- has swung a little bit too far on that side. That's all I'm saying. Okay. And I think also- Wait, sorry, to which side has the, the pendulum swung? To the, the liberal left-leaning side, side mm-hmm. with this trans issue. When, again, you, you, t- you say trans in the public and everyone starts clapping. Oh, my God. You say when we had the first U.S. black president, we applaud it. Are you well, equating uh, no, but I'm saying race I am, to trans? I'm talking about I'm talking about people, you know, minorities in society feeling but accepted and, and being supported. Aki. That's all. So, Aki, Aki, would you would you agree that uh, we should have laws in place that companies have a certain percentage of their employees as trans? So quotas. Quotas. Mm, I, I would have to think about that. Okay, we're waiting. I have to yeah. think about that. <laughs> I, I don't. Okay, you know, you're building. You're, you're coming. You're, you're coming from. You're, you're taking affirmative action. That's that's where you're coming from. And affirmative action was very clear. It was it was sociologically demonstrable. Dem, demonstrable? No. It was it was uh, clear that we had you know a, a community that was clearly because of prejudice was was left behind. Uh, was deprived of opportunity. Was deprived of edu- of educational uh, resources. Was deprived of of uh, countless resources and never really had a fair deal in okay, our in our society. Fine. That's what we started from. That's so affirmative action. <laughs> now, if, if 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 somebody can demonstrate to me that trans or other other communities are also in that situation where they're suffering from extreme discrimination and they're facing extreme hurdles, then we could have a conversation. About, so you don't. About, so you don't think that trans are, are discriminated against right now? There, there, there is discrimination, but is it is it is it at a level where it's just completely macro, or is it uh, is it at a level that makes sense from a most, societal I perspective? Would, because the, the number of people that we're talking about is so goddamn small that it doesn't freaking stop matter. Stop it! Stop well, it with I, your, your, no, your, with your I, percentages. No, I think I think my raises point, a valid point, and does. I'll tell I'll tell you he why. Does. I'll give you the example. You talk about um, individuals of color who were discriminated against and therefore affirmative action was taken, so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, In the private sector, female representation at executive level and on boards became a concern across broader society. And so other actions were put into place in order to ensure if there are two candidates, you're going to do your very best to choose the female candidate over any male candidates just to ensure that we have better balance and representation. Exactly. But that's because just over 50% of the population is female. I think what I hear Naran saying is, if the numbers are right, say 1%, 2% of the entire population um, fits into a, a category of individuals who are being discrim- discriminated against because of gender or because of gender identification issues, that the number isn't significant enough for us to take those types of affirmative action. Well, that's, that's, is, that, is that what yeah, I'm hearing? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. And, and, I, and I think that whether you agree or not, I think his point is entirely valid. Okay, so my, my response to that is, if there's any form of discrimination, people are being uh, held, you know, held back, that's, that's a societal issue that should be addressed. Now, whether it, I whether don't it be- I don't agree with discrimination. I don't agree with it at all. So, what I'm trying to say is at a certain point, there's a pendulum and there's a backlash that happens. That's all I'm saying. When you go too far, people push back. And you don't necessarily want to have that because you don't want to get pushed back okay. by 99% so, so of I, Hold on. I, also, I want to take the, your point further. I also believe that we can really talk about societal progress when we stop having to have discussions about the need to legislate yeah, exactly. certain actions. Yeah, exactly. So, for instance, you know, I, I talked about female representation at executive level in the private sector at a board level. Okay. 
What about, you know, homosexual representation? Yeah, what exactly. about, at what point do we say as a society, let's choose the most qualified person exactly. and be blind to the person's race, exactly. color, just religious don't discriminate. beliefs, okay. but we gender period. identification. Period. Don't discriminate. Right. But, that's, but that is not reality. That's not the way society actually works. Well, let's there fix there are, that. We agree. And, and my point is that human nature being what it is, it'll never be looked at unanimously. Yeah. And so where do we feel that it is appropriate for society to step in with legislation that forces the issue so, versus where we use encouragement, yeah. education, yeah. And, and, and try and reach a point where we're making progress. Yeah. Okay, but that's, that, that's always been, the, the strategy has been, you have to do, you have to do both. You have to, you, you have no, to. No, you don't have yes, to do Yes, you do, do. you have to do both. You don't have to do anything. You, you do have to. If you want to be a society, a civilized society, well, you, you need ten, to have, you need to have a society of, if, of laws. If you need ten, to have human rights. You need Aki, to have a justice system. Aki, when you all have, of that, all of those are haves. No one's arguing with you. Well, but you're, when you have 10, 15% of your population. I don't care. Who's. If you if, if, nobody, nobody, discrimination is discrimination. Discrimination should not happen to anybody told, in a society. I End agreed with you before. I said that dis discrimination doesn't belong anywhere, but to legislate for a 1% or less of population versus 10, 15, 20% so of your that population. So how does that 1% percent pursue their rights? Okay. By, well, 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 I'm sorry. No, wait, you wait, just wait don't a second. There's anti-discrimination laws. Nuren, Use those laws. Nuran, Nuran. One moment. He says 1%. Mm -hmm. And you ask, where does that 1%? Where does that 1%, what recourse does that 1% have? Let me ask you a question. It's no longer 1%. It's one person. What recourse does that one person yes, have? Yes, what recourse does that one person have? That's the question. Not 1%, one person. One person. One person. Everybody and my, and my point is, I will agree with you 100% all day, all night, that as a society, we need to do better. However, I will draw the line at saying we have to legislate for one person in all society or maybe even one percent in all of society, depending on the severity of the issue, understanding that we need to do better as a broader society. Uh, laws are not laws are macro laws encompass embrace are they anti-discrimination laws in place yes there are so use those fucking laws we do why do you need new we ones do. but it's not just about the law it's also about economic about opportunity it's also about uh social what well -being. Pat said if the person is the best person for the job and they're being discriminated against there are laws in the books for that you go and you sue them okay. there are civil suits that you can bring to bear and if some companies choose to take it a step further and be more progressive and say yes you know a, a female run company yes. she would like to have more you know up and coming mentor more women and have a, a higher proportion of women in our leadership core. So, so that company that? that company should be able to, to, to do that and that's where what, we're at what, right now. What it, that should not be interpreted as being the pendulum swinging too far the other way. Uh, women are 50% plus of our society. Exactly. There's a difference. Numbers freaking matter. Okay? You don't bend over backwards for a tiny fraction of your society and have every piece of discourse in the public space, everything that's happening with any of the movie stars or anything in Hollywood, where everything, now you got to have a trans person on every show because you got to show them everywhere. Good Lord. Like, uh, that's the pendulum that I'm talking about. This is where people say enough's enough. I don't want to see I'm this sorry, shit Nora, all the time. I'm sorry, Nora. I'm sorry, Nora. But, it, it, yeah. but there's, there's, no, there's no shortage of what we should be doing what? in order to defend rights. That, there's not nothing. Okay. Uh, there, you know what? I can't disagree with that statement. Oh, no, I agree. <laughs> I can't disagree with that statement. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <man. laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> so, so, so it's interesting. <laughs> we're we're members of Western society, <laughs> and clearly there are strong differences of opinion on on some of oh, the issues oh, we've been oh tabling. Yeah, yeah. Imagine those society. Where oh. there is no tolerance. Oh my God! Which is most of the world. Which is most of the world. Yeah, right. yeah. and that's a, that's a shame. And there, there I'll feel for the trans community in those in those oh, places. And and I mean it. You know, it's just in North America. I just feel like like we've gone too far to the left. But when it comes well, to well, you talk about you talk about trans and and I and can't gay disagree and with everything you. else. Well, what about just being a female or a female, <laughs> gay, uh, gay lesbian, there, there whatever? Are, it's all the, a the whole, disaster. The concept yeah, yeah. of equal rights, yeah, LGBTQ, is completely foreign. That's when you put all the letters together and yeah, yeah. yeah but the women are doing well these days. 
Better. Women are doing well? Better. Where? Much Where? better. Where? Here. Oh, here. Oh, in Western society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Western society, yeah. yeah. Go yeah. to Iran. See, what, yeah, know, see how they're doing there. But that's why they come I, over I'm here. I'm not going to disagree with you if you're talking about Western society. Oh, yeah. yeah. I see my two but Western society doesn't represent the world. No. So, so, so Sorry, Pat, I, I thought you were talking here. So. so all my railings and all everything that I said was based on on Western society. Mm -hmm. When it comes to what you said about you know other places, yeah. if you're in Russia or in the Arab states or whatever, yeah, it's a disaster. And there, I'll feel for the for the rights. I I don't. I don't want people to be discriminated against. Let me be clear. It's not about discrimination. I know that. It's. I think everyone like live and let live is my mantra. I, I I have nothing against anyone who wants to live the way they want to do. I have issues with people dealing with children in the wrong way. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is I have issues with the way it's it, the pendulum has swung too far okay. to the left and this with respect to the rights and all of this other stuff that's being thrown upon people in my opinion who don't need them because as long as we have discrimination rights they should deal with those that's all i'm saying okay. and so all, all and, I, and what i'm saying is where i where i differ from you is uh, this definition of the pendulum swinging too far and i'm saying there's a level of discrimination there's a level of ignorance that's still very powerful in society and and there's and there's there's people who suffer and there's people who have doors shut on shut, shut on their faces. So if important sectors like Hollywood, the example that you gave, wants to go a little further to open some of those doors, I think that's legitimate and has a place in our society. But there's going to be a backlash. That's all I'm saying, and we're seeing some of that. Okay, agree. Naren, final thoughts. Those were my final thoughts. <laughs> Excellent. Don't come after me, people. <laughs> Dominic. <laughs> Two genders. Two genders alone. Only. Aki? I think you guys have made it clear where I stand. Okay. So my final thoughts. Again, I think that as far as sex is concerned, I believe in science. Therefore, you're either born male or female. As far as gender identification is concerned, live and let live. I subscribe to the same philosophy as you do, Noran. I would just encourage parents, teachers, uh, and, and really all members of society to be much more understanding and supportive of young people from early age through to adulthood who, who struggle with gender identification until they reach a stage where hopefully things become clearer for them. And at that point, we respect their choices and live their, let them live their lives accordingly. I just, uh, if, if I may, uh, let me just, uh, this conclusion from me, which is um, keep the doors open. I'd rather err on the side of open doors. And on that note, we will close the door <laughs> for this episode. <laughs> Yeehaw! Thanks, guys. Good conversation. Excellent. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.